What's going on, everybody? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching the Sit Down. Jaron Lewis in here with us. Never have I ever season two streaming now on Netflix. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm feeling great. The season two is out. It's it's super exciting. The response has been incredible. So I'm just riding that wave. I'm I'm just uh, I just feel super lucky and blessed, and I'm just excited. What are the biggest differences in the reactions from season one compared to season two so far? I think that this time I actually get to hear people's reactions in person. <laughs> you know, last year we uh, our show came out end of April, kind of during the height of the pandemic. So a lot of my interactions were just pretty much online like everybody else. But this time, if I go out to eat or anything like that, oftentimes I'll get to actually interact with some fans, which is super special and really exciting because sometimes, you know, you get to interact with people in person, you actually see the passion on their face and it's just, it's an extra emphasis. It's, uh, it's the cherry on top. What has been most fascinating to you so far about the whole experience? Why do you think this show resonates so deeply? I think it's just because of the relatability, the representation, and also it's just really funny. It's, it's a great show. The writing is excellent. I think that it's heartwarming and the characters are so well written and so well acted. And I think that when you have that, you have such a, a diverse cast there's something for everybody in our show, whether you're 65 plus or you're somewhere in the middle in age or whatever community or identity that you share, there's something in our show that you can identify with or see yourself in. And I think that when people have the ability to kind of see themselves in a show, they are really passionate about it. And at least that's what I've observed. It's been really incredible kind of hearing how much the show means to everybody for different reasons. So it's, it's really, it's awesome. The other beautiful thing, too, is that it's all these different people, but then people around the world can watch it because Netflix is everywhere, man. So can you give me an example of somebody that set you up from somewhere you never could have imagined before? Yeah, I think the one of the biggest hits, I think, uh, country wise is Brazil. I get tons of messages from Brazil. Like if I ever have to go to Brazil, <laughs> I think I have at least like a thousand apartments that I can stay in. <laughs> I'm going to like parades like I'm having like families that I can meet and cook, like cook for me. Like it's, it's crazy. Everybody in Brazil loves it. I know it's, it's huge in India. Like I, I, I looked the other day and I saw like number one in Greece, in Cyprus, in Latvia, in, in places that I've never been that I can only dream of going. It's, it's just, it's mind boggling that it's so popular around the world. It's, it's a really special show and it's special for people everywhere, which is really incredible. That's really awesome to hear. I think folks obviously realize what Minnie Kaling has done in her career, but this is another wrinkle to her career. What do you love the most about the world she's created here and just who she's been in this industry as well? I think that she's always been a really big role model for me. I was a big fan of The Office growing up. And then actually meeting her, oftentimes you kind of get nervous where it's like, oh, I don't know if I should meet my heroes. In this case, it turned out even better than I could have imagined. Mindy is not only one of the most kind, genuine, and caring human beings on the planet, but she's an incredible leader and she's a brilliant writer and producer and all of the above. It's just working with her creates a confidence, you know, having someone like that believe in you. It's really, it's, it's special because a lot of people don't take that chance on, on a, a cast that wasn't super well known beforehand, but she and Lang both believed in us so much. And I think that it's worked out pretty well. So going off that point, what do you remember about the audition process now that you have the show and it's been a big thing for you? Yeah, so originally I sent in a tape because I'm actually from Dallas. That's where I grew up. I was 18 at the time and I just taped the audition, sent it in. Two weeks later, I was at freshman orientation for USC and I actually got a call that they wanted me to screen test, which means there's about four or five people usually left and you kind of can either send in a tape or go in person. And I was like, well... I want to go possibly meet Mindy, even if I don't get the role, like at least I could say, whoa, I met Mindy, you know, that's super cool. So I wound up going in person. I read for her and Lang and the rest of the creative team, the executive producers and everything. And then about a week or two later, I got the call that I booked the role. And two weeks after that, flew out to LA to start shooting. It was a pretty quick process, but uh, Fast and Furious is kind of nice. That's incredible. I mean, I think you have really good perspective too, right? Growing up in Dallas, having a normal childhood, you were coming out to college for SC. How did that shape you in terms of the guy you are today? I loved my upbringing. I think that like growing up, I wanted to do so many different things. I, I'm a big sports guy. I played football in high school, powerlifting as well. I did theater. Like it really gave me the chance to kind of 
understand what the high school experience is about and then going off to college as well. I think it allowed me to kind of grow and find myself and uh, build the identity of the man that I want to be and, and the, the man that I want to be in the future as well. So it just kind of also as an actor gives you a bit more of a well-rounded worldview for, for different characters and different situations to kind of bring authenticity and honesty to your characters. So I wouldn't change anything about my upbringing. If anything, it just, it, it made me even stronger than I think I could have imagined if I had maybe had success a little bit younger, it probably would have let, been a, a bit harder for me. So it's it's been great and I'm still learning. I'm still going to school. I'm still kind of figuring out what it means to live in this adult world. Like I think most college kids are. So although I'm, I'm uh, you know, maybe uh, a bit more ahead in career wise than some of my peers, I'm still learning kind of what all that means. How was your game on the football field? What was your position? I played cornerback. I was actually the captain my senior oh, wow. year. I started, I, it's weird because I'm like five, six and you wouldn't really <laughs> expect me to be super athletic. I was underestimated my entire high school career, but my high school actually wound up my senior year beating uh, a team called Cedar Hill, who was ranked 34th in the nation. We were 40 point underdogs and we <laughs> beat them by a last second field goal miss. Wow. And it was like huge covered by the local news. Like it was, it was massive. I played really well. That game it was one of the best games of my life. Definitely a highlight. Got the newspaper clipping in my bedroom. So <laughs> I was all right. That's awesome, man. I mean, listen, you don't see too many five, six quarterbacks, but hey, Tony Romo was down at his whole career and I'm sure you got to see plenty of him growing up in Dallas. Yeah, yeah, I'm a huge Romo fan. I I wish I'd met him. I uh, I did a Papa John's commercial when I was a kid, and I met like T.O., who was a a huge staple in Dallas Cowboys, uh, uh, you know. But uh, haven't met Tony. I hope I get the chance. Well, you know, I think you're on your way here in terms of meeting all these different folks. Now you're out in L.A. doing your thing at USC. Let's just talk about school for a second because you're doing psychology, criminology. What's been the best part of USC so far? I think I just I love the people. I love, you know, whether I'm going to class and I'm being taught by some incredible faculty or I'm meeting peers that are really driven in doing such incredible things. It's, it's a school with tremendous school spirit with some really passionate, driven individuals who are not only super intelligent, but also really kind. It's just, it's, I don't know, I toured USC and I just knew I wanted to go there. The second I stepped on campus, I was like, this is my school. I want to be a Trojan. And that magic that I felt that first time stepping on campus still has not left me. Every time that I'm on campus, I still feel that tremendous sense of pride. And I guess, uh, you know, <laughs> I bleed cardinal and gold now. So that'll probably stay with me the rest of my life. It's a good spot. And it obviously helps with what you're doing now. And also there have been people who have done what you're doing, right? Going to school, doing the acting thing. I mean, how much did that help just in terms of this is a crazy experience for you, but there are other kids who have done this before. Yeah, I mean, every situation is unique and special in their own right. And I mean, you obviously look at like people, there's super famous directors that are big fans of USC, whether it's George Lucas or Steven Spielberg, who didn't necessarily go to USC, but they're, they're huge staples in our community. And then actors as well as like, uh, Dave Franco and of course Will Ferrell those are people that I look up to and I say wow like these were our, our USC alum that are doing tremendous things and I hope to follow in their footsteps and I think that uh, as of right now I would say that I'm on the right path so I'm going to keep on keep on chugging on and hopefully it'll keep uh, being great for me. Well good deal man I mean the hardest thing is to get on a hit show right you got that going on right now for folks that haven't checked it out yet or are waiting for season two what's the big pitch to get them hooked on your show? I think for people that haven't seen season one, I, I would say that it's it's going to be a show unlike anything that you've ever seen, regardless, again, of whatever community you identify, you identify with. There's something in our show that you can relate to. It's super funny. It's heartwarming. It'll make you strangely emotional that you weren't expecting at certain points. And for season two, for fans that have season one and are, are, are super passionate about it, season two is, in my opinion, even better than season one. I think that it's even smarter and, and complex and it's messy, which is super fun for viewers to get to watch all of the characters that we kind of set up that world building in season one, you just jump right into it. It's a really rich season. It's full of some pretty incredible moments and it's really well acted, well written, well produced. It's just a great show, a great season. And if people haven't seen it, I'll, all I say is I look forward to hearing their thoughts. Well, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of thoughts. You're terrific in the show. And thanks so much for jumping on. Really appreciate it. You got a great story. And you know, we'll talk again down the road, all right? Yeah, thank you.